So um, this video is going to be talking about factoring. We introduced it in the last two videos, but this will try to I'll try to summarize some of the things we observed in the last two videos and um, show you some examples. Uh, we didn't discuss this in the last video, but the first step in, when you're factoring is always to factor out a greatest common factor. And the worksheet, which is posted on Canvas, um, kind of summarizes that idea. So if you've forgotten how to do that, um, but the, basically the idea is you look to see if there's a factor that's common to all three terms. So, for example, in this case, uh, we notice that 3x squared is, is a common factor to all three terms because they all have at least x squared or higher, and they all have a, they all, all the co coefficients have a factor of 3. So when you're factoring out the greatest common factor, you factor out the 3x squared. In other words, you write the 3x squared outside the uh, parentheses. This, some people call this reverse distributive property because you're undoing a distrib distrib the distribution of a number being multiplied. So notice what's left inside is basically just this term divided by 3x squared. So if you divide, <clears throat> for example, 9x squared, or excuse me, 9x to the fourth, by 3x squared, you, the 3 and the 9 will cancel, leaving a 3. And the x squared and the x to the fourth cancel, leaving an x squared. So that's where that 3x squared comes from. Likewise here, the 3s cancel, and all the x's but 1 cancel, so there's an x there. And then with this one, um, 3 will go into 12 4 times, there's the 4, and x squared divided by x squared, of course, is 1. Okay, so that's factoring out the greatest common factor. And there's a couple here. Um, you can factor out a 2 there. So that would be 2 times a plus b. And and you can, um, if you want to turn off the video, just try your hand at this. <clears throat> and um, I will run through a couple, and then I will shut off the video, and then just do the rest so you can see so you'll have the answers. Okay. So in this case, um, I look at both terms, and oh, there's only... The first term has an x, but the second term doesn't, so there won't be any x's involved. But there is a 5 in both. So I'd factor out a 5, and that would leave x squared. And notice when I divide 5 by 5, it is still 1. There's something there, right? That's a common mistake that people, when you factor out a 5 and there's nothing but a 5 there, they think it disappears. But there is a 1 there, because remember, we're dividing both terms by 5 when we factor. These both have an x in them, and they both have a factor of 9 in them. So that would be 9 times 2 minus, um, I'm sorry, take a 9x. Well, actually, this one I wouldn't even factor because they're like terms, so you could just add those together. 18 minus 27, that'd be negative 9x, wouldn't it? Okay, over here, um, they, not every term has an x, but they do have a factor of 4. So you'd write the 2 outside, and that would leave you with 2x squared plus x minus 4. And um, I think I'll stop the video and just do the rest of these so you can come back and check them. Okay, so there's the answers. Um, so if you want to just continue, um, if you want to continue factoring the you know, 1 through 16, you can come back in and check this. Uh, notice some of these, we haven't factored them completely because in the directions it just said factor it, um, factor out a greatest common factor. And some of these, of course, can be factored further, like, for example, 6 and 7 could be factored further. But we'll be talking about that style of factoring. Although, if we were to factor it further, you would have this. And if we were to factor this further, you would have this. That's a difference of squares factoring technique. Um, there we have it. Okay. So you can pause the video and check all your work here, and I'm going to move on. So I'll leave it a second. Um, so that's factoring of the greatest common factor. So whenever you're factoring, that should always be your first move. Check to see if I can factor any great, um, common factor out of all the terms, because basically what that does is makes the numbers smaller and, and just makes it easier for you to um, work with. So then the second one is factoring so another type of factoring is factoring trinomials, and I said case one because it's easier to factor a number when um, 
the leading coefficient is one. If you remember, the leading coefficient is the coefficient or the number that's being multiplied by the term of the highest power. <clears throat> so often if, we're written, if it's written, if the polynomial is written in standard form, then the leading coefficient will be the first, the coefficient of the first term. It doesn't have to be, but that's normally the way we write them in standard form. So if you keep in mind the patterns we learned in that in the last video or by doing the worksheet, notice, remember we noticed that when the last sign is addition, both signs are the same and match the middle term. And when the last time is subtraction, both signs are different and the large number goes with the sign of the middle term. Okay, so that means if I have like, for example, um, oops, if I have uh, something plus something, plus something, then that's going to factor into a plus and a plus. If I have something minus something plus something, that's going to factor into a minus and a minus. Um, and if we have something with plus or minus here and a minus there, then we know that the signs are going to be different, a plus and a minus or a minus and a plus. That's what this is summing up. And remember, we noticed that pattern by multiplying a bunch of things over and over again. So when we get down here, uh, again, I'm going to just take you through the first couple, explaining how I do it. And then I would, um, I'll shut off the video and um, do a bunch more and then, then have you, so that you can check yourself. So you don't wreck yourself. Okay. So here we notice that it's a, the last term is positive and then the middle term is positive, which means I'm going to have a plus and a plus. And of course, this is going to be x and x. So then I just have to look at the factors of 7. Of course, the only factors of 7 are 7 and 1. So I can put a 7 here and a 1 there, or either way around, it doesn't matter. And notice that 7x plus 1x is 8x. Okay, so once again, over here, we have plus and plus, which means it's going to be plus and plus. Again, this tells me the same sign. This tells me they're both positive. This has to be, excuse me. This has to be x, and um, the options for 24 are 24 times 1, um, 12 times 2, 6 times 4, and 3 times 8. And since the signs are the same, I'm looking for a sum of 11. And when you think of it that way, it's pretty easy to spot the 3 and 8 are the one you want. So I put a 3 there and an 8 there. So 3x plus 8x is 11x, okay? Let's do a couple more here. Notice here that this last term is positive, but the middle term is negative. So that tells me that it's got to be negative and negative. And it's got to be x and x. And then my factors of 6 are 6 and 1 and 2 and 3. And since the signs are the same, I'm looking for a sum of 5. And that's pretty easy to pick two and three, two and three, okay? And last but certainly not least here, we got um, uh, last term is positive, middle term is negative, which means I have a negative and a negative, and this has got to be x and x, and that's got to be one times 10, or two times five. Since I'm looking for a sum, how do I know I'm looking for a sum? Because the signs are the same. Looking for a sum of 11, so that'd have to be 1 and 10. Okay, so um, there's a few more that look like that, so go ahead and try these. And um, I'm going to pause the video, do them, and then you can check yourself. Okay, so I did uh, numbers 5 through 10 off camera. And, uh, and so you can check those if you've done them on the worksheet. Uh, notice the all, again, just pay attention to that, the fact that the last term is positive. So all of these, 1 through 10, all had the last term positive, which told me the signs are the same. And then I look at the middle term to find out what the sign is. So notice the first couple were positive and the rest were all negative. Okay, now the next few that we have here have a negative um, last term which that tells us that, um, I guess I'll put this one down here, but um, that tells us that the, the signs of the two uh, factors have to be different. Um, 
because again, if I multiply this, this times this, if they're the same sign, it's going to produce a positive number. If they're different signs, it's going to produce a negative number. So in this case here, once again, I know that it's got to be x and x, and I know it's got to be plus and minus, or minus and plus. It doesn't matter where I put the plus or minus, but I know they've got to be different, right? So I'm looking for, of course, this one's fairly easy because the only options for factors of 2 are 2 and 1. And, they do, and, and since the signs are different now, we're looking for a difference of 1. And of course, 2 and 1 have a difference of 1. Whoops. But pay attention, since the, la the middle term is negative, that means I want my biggest number to be negative. So I put the 2 there and the 1 there. That way, when I multiply them out, I will get a negative x in the middle. Okay. Likewise, in this one, I'm going to go x and x. It's got to be plus and minus, or minus and plus, either way. And I'm looking for a difference, because the signs are different. I'm looking for a difference of 6. And of course, um, 1 times 7 is has a difference of 6. And I want the 7 to be negative, because that, that would end up, that's the bigger number. And negative 7x plus 1x is negative 6x. Okay, cruise on down here. <coughs> Excuse me. It's got to be x and x. Got to be plus and minus, because the sign is, or is negative there. And I'm looking for a difference of 4. So that would have to be a positive 5 and a negative 1. Because again, we want the bigger number to be positive so that I end up with a positive value. And here's another one. Okay, x and x, plus and minus. Now we actually have some choice here. 18 could be, let's see, 1 and 18, or 2 and 9, or 3 and 6. And once again, I'm looking for a difference of 7. And of course, that would be 2 and 9. And I want the bigger one to be negative, so I put a 9 there and a 2 there. Okay. Um, let's, I think I'll shut the video off for now and just do uh, several of them, and you can check back in a few minutes and see if you got it right. Okay. So there we go. There's some more examples of um, factoring with the leading coefficient 1, and the last term is negative, except for that one right there, of course, didn't have a negative. But we did it anyway. So um, I paused... I, I didn't complete the rest of these because I, I came down to ones that um, had something other than a leading coefficient of 1. And so, but the reason why I snuck these in here, because at this point you notice there, there's that um, pattern of a difference of squares that we talked about, that when they just have two terms, we know um, in order for that to happen, the middle term has to be 0, so the outer and the inner have to add up to 0. Which means you can only that can only happen if you have two binomials that are the same terms but different signs in the middle, and that's what you can see here. So on this one here, on number twenty-one, we're going to do the same thing, but I'm going to just make a factor here. It's got to be plus and minus, and I'm just going to put eight x here and eight x there, because that's the same thing. And eight x times eight x is sixty-four x squared, and then putting nine here and a nine here because 9 times 9 is 81. And you see that we get the 64x squared and the 81, but then the middle term is 72x minus 72x, and so they disappear. So the same thing is true here. Um, it's kind of becomes automatic if you've done these for a while. 3x minus 5, 3x plus 5. So notice that 5 is the square root of 25, and 3x is the square root of 9x squared. And right here, we got 12x and 12x, and plus 7 and minus 7. And then finally, this is x and x, and plus 15 and minus 15. Okay. And we'll cruise on down here as long as we're here, finish up this page. And then I think I might end this video and then start a new one because we're getting on to about 15 minutes here. So now this one's an interesting one because uh, in order to have a notice that there's not it's not a it's addition, not subtraction. So we're not going to be able to do this one because if we tried to do um, x and x and 10 and 10, you might be tempted to do that first. But notice it have to be um, 
it have to be the same sign because the last term is positive, right? So if I did plus and plus, that wouldn't work because I would get x squared plus 20x plus 100, wouldn't I? Okay, so let's try minus and minus. Well, if I do minus and minus, same thing happens, only that's a negative. So this is what is called an unfactorable um, polynomial. So we would say not factorable. Okay. Uh, how about this one here? So we go boom, 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 x and x. And my options are 9 and 1 and 3 and 3. And the fact and the signs have to be op the dip have to be opposite, right? And so here is this is this is one where again, if you if you understand what's going on, um, you can try all the possibilities, and if they don't work, then again you can declare them as unfactorable, right? So for in this case, if I put a nine there, oh well, even even simpler, because the signs are different, I'm looking for a difference of one, right? There's nine and one. That's there's not a difference of one, and three and three. That's not a difference of one. So none of these options work. So once again, we would say this is not factorable okay and once again, like here also when we look at this um, you should get a, a hint right away that it's not factorable because 17 is a prime number so we can't factor 17 other than 17 and 1 right and we're looking for a sum of 8 and 17 and 1 definitely don't add up to 8 why are we looking for a sum of 8 because that last term is positive so that means it have to be negative and negative, put an x and an x, and my only option is 1 and 17, and that is not going to work. So this is also not factorable. And finally, a number 28, this is also not factorable, it's for the same reason over here, because we got only two terms, and that last term is positive, which means I couldn't have a positive negative to cancel out the middle. Okay, so um, in the next video, I'm going to talk about, um, this is kind of the, the most difficult part of, most difficult um, case of factoring trinomials, because all are all these except for this couple of them right here had a, just a leading coefficient of 1, so the next group is going to have a leading coefficient of something other than 1. And that's where this just gives us a lot more options when we're trying to figure out what the factors are. Okay, so we'll... Um, I'll cover this on my next video. All right, thanks.